folks. Thanks for uh, coming to watch the interview with the cast of Expedition Bigfoot. Uh, before we get started, I just want to remind you that today, if you're watching this on Sunday, January 3rd, it is the premiere of Season 2 of Expedition Bigfoot. starts out at 8 p.m. Eastern with a one-hour special and then kicks right into Episode 1 of Season 2 at 9 p.m. Eastern. The next day is the kickoff of Discovery's new subscription streaming service, Discovery Plus. So make sure that you check that out for all the Expedition Bigfoot goodness. And also you can watch Season 1 on that too. Uh, just go over to www.discoveryplus.com. All right, so make sure you check that out and let's get right into the interview. All right, well, thanks for coming back to the Bigfoot Society podcast. Uh, today we have a very special episode. Uh, we have the cast of uh, Expedition Bigfoot here uh, with me, and uh, you probably will already know them, but in case you've been living under a rock somewhere, I'll uh, go ahead and do a quick intro. Uh, we have Dr. Maria Mayer, a primatologist, uh, amazing primatologist, amazing, amazing uh, discoverer, uh, we have Bryce Johnson, actor, podcaster with a Bigfoot Collectors Club and researcher, which uh, I'm a big fan of that podcast, of course. Uh, Russell Acord, a survivalist and author. Um, and uh, he's also uh, involved with a, a very large uh, Bigfoot conference on the West Coast. We have Ronnie LeBlanc, uh, involved with the Monsterland uh, podcast and uh, a Lemonster Mass-based uh, Bigfoot researcher. Uh, that area, of course, you've heard of Monsterland in, in that area. But um, let's just get started where I'm going to read through uh, a little uh, release from the Travel Channel here so we can get up to speed uh, in case anyone doesn't know what Expedition Bigfoot is. So uh, 2020 may just be the year the world turned upside down, but for Travel Channel's Expedition Bigfoot team, it was a rare moment in time when three very important sets of data converged and put them one step closer to capturing evidence of the legendary elusive creature. Uh, the Expedition Bigfoot team have reassembled to review their findings from last season and reevaluate the algorithm to respond to the uptick in Bigfoot sightings just this year. In the new one hour special premiering on Sunday, January 3rd at 8 p.m. Eastern, then the team hits the ground running for an exciting season two premiering at 9 p.m. right after. Uh, I am super, super pumped for that because I was uh, watching through some of the episodes the last few days uh, to refresh my memory. I was like, man, there's so many questions that were unanswered. And uh, in Bryce, it's like Bryce has that great quote at the end. It's all I can say is I know our alg al algorithm works. I know that because of the pile of evidence that our team collected in the field. And that tells me we are not done. And I'm like, Man, give me that extra info. So I'm glad that we're taking a step back and we're, you know, catching up with what's happened over this last year. But uh, let's let's get right into uh, some questions. First, I want to ask uh, each of you a specific question. So I'm going to uh, start out with Dr. Mayer. Uh, and as a primatologist, why is it so important that we one day finally discover the truth bef behind Bigfoot once and for all? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, as a, as a scientist, uh, I'm all about exploration and discovery. And I truly believe that there's still uh, lots of things out in nature that we don't know of and haven't identified yet. Um, best example is uh, Western lowland gorillas only discovered 140 years ago, even though they're the world's largest primate that has been discovered. And just a few years ago, I discovered the world's smallest. So there's still so many unanswered questions. And as a scientist, I'm out there to, to, to seek that evidence. If we found it, you know, major, probably discovery of a lifetime, definitely our awesome. lifetime. Awesome. I agree a hundred, a hundred percent. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Bryce for you specifically. Uh, and again, I, I can't, I mean, I'm, uh, pumped to meet all of you, but Bryce, uh, your podcast has been an inspiration for me starting this. So I, I, Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Um, Bryce, what was it like meeting Bob Gimlin personally when you're preparing for your role in the movie uh, Willow Creek? What was that experience like? Oh, well, thanks a lot. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for having us here on uh, on your podcast, Jeremiah. I really appreciate that. Um, can you hear me okay? 
That sounds great, Bryce. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. So, uh, yeah, to answer your question, um, you know, Bob Gimlin is sort of a, uh, well, obviously he's a legend within the Bigfoot community and, Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, it's a real pleasure to try and get his name out to those who really don't know the significance of a guy like Bob Gimlin and, uh, being able to meet him, you know, in filming Willow Creek was, uh, well, it's just an absolute pleasure because, uh, you know, I've always felt for me, you know, getting into this, uh, this Bigfoot phenomenon, which I call it, that that Patterson Gimlin footage was, was really what spurred my imagination and, and got mm. me thinking that, you know, I was watching something that I, that I wasn't supposed to be seeing. Uh, I, I truly believe, um, in the, in the veracity of that film. And, and Bob Gimlin is, is still around to talk about it. And when you actually sit yeah. down and, and hear him retell that story, and he's told it quite a few times, he never misses a beat. Mm. Um, it, he takes you right back to that time and place. And, uh, and it's incredible. You know, I think so many people just watch that, that uh, around a minute video and they're, you know, they're, they have a lot of questions. And, and for me, I've always enjoyed sort of going back and finding out the context uh, of what took place before and after that video took place, because there's so many clues to explore and, and there's so much more to the story uh, about how that video got taken with Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin. And, uh, and so it it was an absolute honor to be able to, uh, to meet with him and, and to be able to call him a friend and, uh, and, and it's a relationship I, I, I really treasure. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bryce. Russell, uh, for you specifically, um, it's amazing uh, the skills you have as a survivalist. Uh, What are your main objectives if you're out in the field and you actually uh, have a face-to-face with an encounter with Bigfoot? What are your main objectives as a survivalist? Three things. Evidence, evidence, evidence. Mm. Um, If I'm in the field, um, I generally carry camera equipment with me. I'll try to capture whatever I can on film. Um, something that large won't pass through an area without leaving footprints or something behind. There's always some kind of a footprint that you can, um, whether it's uh, hair samples, any anything that it, it moved on its path on the way through, but video evidence, any kind of evidence I could get a hold of. If I got a face-to-face within arm's reach, <laughs> I'm not lying. I'm going to grab a chest, uh, a handful of chest hair and run. So that I, have I love it. I love it. Man. On film. So, that's awesome. You're like, yeah, yeah, about- give me that hair. Yeah. Yeah. Just something, cool. um, because so far we've, we've got a lot of things that are, um, inconclusive, um, mm. footprints, hair samples, hair samples that look and, and have DNA or, or have the, uh, look like human hairs, but aren't human hairs. Mm. We have stuff that is inconclusive, and I want conclusive. I want exactly. something. So, want. so yep. far, but season two is not out yet, man. So far, so far. Oh, so Careful, there's... guys! I don't want to do a lot of <laughs> editing. <laughs> but yeah, no, I am uh, so pumped to like. I'm like, oh, what's this season gonna be? You know. Uh, but um, yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you, Russ, for that. That was awesome, uh, Ronnie. Um man, I'm a big fan of what you're doing out there. I, so as a side thing, so I grew up in Northfield, uh, Massachusetts, which is a small town in Western mass. And like, man, there's some weird stuff you see out there, dude. So I'm totally on board with you. Um, if you had to choose between you have the ability to, uh, discover a hundred percent undeniable evidence of UFOs versus discovering a hundred percent undeniable evidence of Bigfoot, which one is more important to you? Which, what choice would you make? Oh boy. I would say Bigfoot because it's such uh, you know, we've, or we've already kind of gotten the, the UFO answer mm. that they are real and they exist yep. and no one seems to care. <laughs> so <laughs> I think I, right. I mean, it Bryce cares, yeah. really hasn't done anything really to move the needle. And so something like this where, mm whether it's a body or, you know, conclusive evidence that Sasquatch is real, I would hundred percent be in, I want to be in that camp to see that happen. Fantastic. Fantastic. That is awesome. Awesome answer. Uh, let's think back team to uh, season one 
with me. And so this is going to be a question that um, I would like to get, uh, you know, answer from everyone. So what was your top, I can't believe this is happening moment that you experienced in season one? Russ, uh, I think you can take I'll, that I'll, from your thermal, man. Go ahead. Oh, man. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would have to say it was a thermal um, yeah. watching it. What was silly is I've, I've mentioned this on a few um, interviews, but I'm looking mm. through the thermals. And for some reason, you know, it's just natural instinct to look up at, you know, what you're seeing on the thermals to see if you can see anything. And it's pitch black. Of course, I'm not going to see anything. <laughs> but um, that was a lot of disbelief. It just seemed very, very odd. Um, but that was definitely um, interesting, to say the least. It was pretty wild. And the way yeah. it, it disappeared when, was even creepier. When, when Russ uh, radioed, you know, me and Ronnie that, that he had videoed something and we should head out there and we went to take a look. I was, uh, I, I gotta be honest, Russ, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but, you know, I really wasn't expecting very much. <laughs> and then I saw what you got and I was sort of gobsmacked. Um, because this thing, as it was, you know, walking away was so reminiscent of the Patterson and Gimlin video that Bryce was talking about earlier, that that sort of same bipedal and arm motion, it was, it was sort of shocking so much so that I showed it to a colleague of mine, Dr. Russ Mittermeier, who yeah. is a world renowned primatologist. He has yes. only, or only person in the world to ever see every living primate species in the wild. Wow. And I showed it to him. He's a total skeptic. He saw it mm -hmm. and he wanted to watch it about 50 times. And then what did he say to you, Bryce? Well, he said uh, something large and upright. It looks like it's very far from its home in Africa. In yeah. other words, yeah. he was, he yeah. was insinuating that uh, this could very well be a Bigfoot caught on, on thermal camera. And I mean, this just goes to show, you know, kind of what, sets our show apart from from others is having connections like that within the scientific community is is unparalleled i mean oh, yeah. being able to actually get on a skype call with with dr russell mittermeier and and have him look at our our thermal you know bigfoot video is 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 like nothing else and it's and it's 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 unbelievable to be able to speak with uh academics like that and it's a much needed for the Bigfoot community to, to get yes. the scientific yeah. community on board. So we are so lucky to have somebody like, like Maria and, and, and Russell who captured it and, and Ronnie who brings high strangeness to the field. And, and like you, you know, I was reviewing a lot of season one and, and, and I think the fans are in for a big treat because, you know, we have a new special airing on January 3rd at 8 PM mm -hmm. Eastern time called new evidence which is going to kick nice. off our season two uh so that's going to be a two-hour fun-filled adventure but you know for, for me i i went over season one too and i was just astounded at the at just how much evidence we actually got and and when you look at it individually sure you're left with uh, a, a lot of questions as usually evidence leaves us but when you put it all together it creates this overwhelming composite picture that we were in the right place at mm -hmm. the right time oh, yeah. and uh and man there was just so much of it and i think i think viewers are going to be even more amazed at at how much stuff we come across in season two as well i mean they're in for a real treat that's awesome that is yeah i can't wait uh ronnie what what was your uh uh, top, I can't believe this is happening right now uh, moment. I have one in mind, but I want to see what you're you're going to say. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, the thermal was amazing, incredible. Uh, the, the whole the whole experience there was was something that uh, we had kind of used the term magical while we we're mm -hmm. there because things were just kind of happening in succession. And mm -hmm. uh, but that thermal for me to see that and the size of what it, of this thing, uh, that's what we're trying to capture is evidence mm -hmm. like that. And then if we can couple it with DNA evidence and everything else to corroborate, uh, that's what we're we're here to do. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, any other uh, things to add to that before I don't want to you know cut no, everything I'll, anyone I'll off? Back on what Bryce, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is in this special that's uh, that's gonna kick off the season two, 
you know, viewers are going to get to uh, learn some new findings from the evidence we collected because, of course, we had to have some of that stuff analyzed um, at scientific labs and by experts. Uh, and those results weren't in on time for the first season to report. So we're, we're going to be discussing that. Um, and, you know, you guys, like for me, and I, I hopefully for you too, those, the nets that, that Russ found while we were out there. I mean, once again, this is a moment, you know, I call myself the uh, open-minded skeptic, right? Because sure. I'm all about keeping feet firmly planted on the ground and looking for that hard evidence. And again, when this nest uh, possibility, uh, popped up. I went over there thinking, you know, it's probably going to be a bear nest or, you know, because I started to rule out what could have made this. Sorry, mm -hmm. Russ. But the truth is I walked over there and I've, I've spent a lot of time in the wilds, for example, with the gorillas and they make ground nests and they're exactly. very, they're very, uh, very well constructed and thought out. I mean, there's real intention behind and, and intricacy almost to them, right? And, and even a comfort level. If you lay on it, they're more comfortable than, you know, my mattress. Oh, and wow. so when I went over there and, you know, Ronnie and I were, were, were looking around and inspecting this thing, there was no question that there was this intent behind it and an intricacy behind it. Uh, mm. And it was just much it blew my mind like I had no idea yeah. that that's what I, I was about to stumble upon or across did you notice any certain materials in the uh those that you you found did, did I remember? notice any uh particular uh materials um types of uh, certain types of uh branches or in well, the nests or yeah I mean so a animals it's funny because even animals that that display the same type of behavior may do it mm -hmm. using different types exactly. of uh, substrates or whatever. It's what's available in their natural environment, right? Sure. So yep. in this case, there was nothing, uh, obviously, you know, there was no rope used, right? So nothing from the unnatural element of, of the right. wild. Okay. But there was, there were patterns of, of lacing and that sort of thing. So they were taking what is available, you know, whatever made this, took what was available and constructed something mm -hmm. that quite frankly, you know, many adults wouldn't even be able to, to construct. Um, and that's what was uh, sort of intriguing about it for me. Yeah. That's I mean, fascinating. It, yeah. Go I ahead. Bryce. Say, the intricacy of this nest leaves you with something with thumbs had to make this. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we mm -hmm. want to eliminate, we want to eliminate human manufacturing. And when you look at uh, those tree breaks, there were, there were no, there were no saw marks, no yeah, hatchet the, marks, the no marks. cut marks. Yeah. You know, they were either twisted off, broken off. And, and some of these were pretty big in diameter, possibly an inch and a half, two inches. And wow. And like Maria said, intricately woven. But and not only that, but there was that dead hawk that laid right out at the yeah. entrance of this cave completely. Yeah, untouched. that's right. <laughs> that's so, where I mean, Ronnie just, came in, because I just find that highly strange. So, Ronnie, you yeah. the hawk. Man. Ronnie, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, to add to the, the nest piece, one thing I noticed right away is where it was positioned was was high up with uh, a ring of pine trees kind of around it, almost making a little fence. And this oh, thing, okay, you could yeah. smell something unique when you got to the nest and they use it was using pine. And I think it was using that to kind of mask some of that scent that we were smelling it, it eventually kind of faded away a little bit. But but seeing that hawk lying mm. intact next to the nest to me was like an offering. It was almost like, here, here you go. Here, here's a little symbol. And, and we see uh, that symbolism of hawk and hawk feathers in Native American folklore and their mm -hmm. legends, and especially with, with Bigfoot. So there's that connection there. That to the spiritual to, to kind of uptick from that point after the nest. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, one of my favorite parts from season one is when uh, right outside uh, the main base, you're like, Hey, uh, check this out. I think one of the cameramen finds it. And there's like the, the gift is there. That was from the totally different area. Yeah, that just marble. blew my yeah. mind. Yeah. And, and it's something that I've, I've gotten back here at home after going mm. into the woods and finding marbles kind of like oh. just, appearing without you know not like you scuff it up under the ground and hey you found a marble like planted there when you turn around for a second and turn back and it shows up 
And wow. that to me was almost like another gift or message that we were on the right track. Um, so it was, it was pretty incredible. Very cool. Very cool. Um, another question for the team. Uh, so let's say if we, if we discover uh, Bigfoot and uh, he is now like we have Bigfoot, what's the first like number one priority that we have to do with this discovery in your thoughts? What, what, Go I, ahead. Yeah. I get naming rights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I All mean, right. I, like that is the dream, right? I get the naming rights. Yeah, that would be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Bigfoot will be known as Maria from now on. Yeah. <laughs> Maria Sasquatch. I, I might name it after you, Bryce. How about that? Yeah, that that wor- <laughs> that, that Big, works for me. Bigfoot Bryceitis. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. You know, it's a great question. Uh, I, I don't think a lot of people think about what happens next if we yeah. if we do uh, confirm the existence of, of this creature. And a lot of people have different, uh, you know, sort of theories and ideas. But uh, I don't know. It's 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 a it's a great question for for debate and discussion. And, and I would love for the community to get there at some point. And, and exactly. uh, you know, in, in uh, all hopefully we will. One of the first things I would want to do is is write up a scientific paper sure, and get yeah. these things out of the books of legend and into the science books, right? Exactly. So that would be for me the very first thing. Um, but you know, when you discover a new species, there's this antiquated um, historical uh, thing that needs to happen, which is you're supposed to bring in a body for a museum specimen. Basically, it sits in a drawer for people to be able to. Uh, to analyze and to keep studying. And I'm not from that school of thought. So when I discovered the species in Madagascar, Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of arguing back and forth because that is how they wanted this to proceed. And so we we had to make some major compromises because I was not going to kill a living being uh, for the sake of science, right? So I think it poses a really interesting question, but you know, for me, it would be collecting enough evidence that we would not be required, you know, to do something like that. We would have enough evidence to stand alone to show that this is, in fact, a, 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 a newly discovered species, or at least newly proven discovered. Well, and to add to that, too, you know, new species are being discovered all the time. As a matter right. of fact, just mm-hmm. in December, uh, just this month, a new species of whale was discovered in Mexico, which I True, thought yeah. so was incredible because um, most people pretty much thought, well, we've discovered all the whale species there is to discover, <laughs> but no, there is yet another one. And that just, yeah. that just clues you in that, uh, that there's a lot of undiscovered territory, not only in our oceans, but in these dense forested areas in Northern America and across the world. So uh, to the skeptic, I say, you know, there is still room to discover a large bipedal possible primate uh, I agree. in North America. Yep. So it's not out of the realm of possibility. As a matter of fact, it, it, it's quite reasonable. Mm. Um, anything to add to that, uh, Russell or Ronnie, uh, what your number one priority would be? I, th- I think if we discover undisputable evidence then I think the rush is on to um, worry about preservation. Yes. And, right. Oh, yes. You know, I hate to use the language, so I won't, but you've always got that one so-and-so that wants that trophy in his trophy room. And you have to protect what you find some way. Collect the evidence without, like Maria said, without bringing yeah. a body in. You can bring hair samples, take measurements, get everything that you need in the field if you have a, a full-grown Bigfoot on your hands. You collect mm. all that evidence, video, even blood sample, hair sample, whatever you need to. But to bring in a body, I think, would be absolutely ludicrous. Mm. And you have to find a way to protect what has done such a good job of of keeping itself hidden all these years, regardless. But I think the hunt would yeah. be on at that point, and that's the only thing that would worry me. Gotcha, gotcha, uh, Ronnie. Yeah, I mean, Russ brings up a good point. It's it's almost like you have to protect the crime scene. So, if if we found this, you know, and all these different places that we we're going to, our our hotspots have had a lot of activity. But I think you'd almost have to really create a, a scenario where we're 
we're really observing this place like 24 seven, that take it to the next level than what we're doing. Um, and then making sure that we keep that place kind of secret and no one else is kind of coming in Definitely, there to do yes. like what Russ would say, try <laughs> to take one of these out. Yeah, I agree. But, uh, I agree. We know that we're in a great spot and then observe and bring the scientific community in and all that. Awesome. Um, Another question uh, for the team as uh, as we're going along here. Um, and I, I understand we have to be very careful with this because, of course, season two has not aired yet. Um, but if you if you can, can you sum up season two to you in one word or a short amount of words without Amazing. Course, giving anything away? Yeah. Amazing. East, East Coast. Oh, OK. And talking. <laughs> oh. Hey, wow. Uh, one upping me as usual. <laughs> Bugs. <laughs> Bugs. The, uh, Bugs. The, the algorithms pointed to a 75,000 uh, acre swatch um, of Appalachian Forest in eastern Kentucky. Mm. Uh, I won't give away much more, but I will say that uh, we're in Kentucky and then some very unexpected twists occur that are really going to shock people. I yeah, cannot I mean, wait. Yeah. Maria, Maria said it. I mean, there's, yeah. there's a big drop for your fans, Jeremiah, because, uh, yeah. you know, we have found this 75,000 acre piece of, of, of land that My the goodness. algorithm has a hotspot right in the middle of it. And what I love about that is for those on the East coast, especially in the, in the Southeastern area, they know, that uh, Bigfoot exists down there. There's so yes. many stories that come out of that Appalachian region. And, uh, you know, I think most people, when they think of Bigfoot, they think of the Pacific Northwest, uh, which of course is true, but it's gonna be a great adventure and a surprise for our viewers to come with us to the Southeastern United States where so many incredible reports come out of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a lot of interesting cryptid activity in the Southeast U.S. So I'm yeah. I'm excited to see uh, uh, season one had amazing things that I wasn't expecting. Uh, the cemetery in the woods, the mm. the uh, abandoned house. Uh, I can't wait to see what uh, season two uh, has in addition to um, uh, to that as well. Um Man, uh, we are coming up uh, at the end of our our time, but I I would definitely want you know each of you has your your own uh, amazing um, uh, content really, and so I'd love if you'd be able to share uh, if my listeners are like, man, I really like Russell, I really like Bryce, like, do you mind going around and like how people can best follow you or like um, if you've uh, created books or anything like that that they can check out. And we'll, uh, we'll start with Ronnie. Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, um, so my website is Ronnie uh, LeBlanc.com and I've written two books focused on Monsterland area in central Massachusetts. And it really kind of connects, tries to connect the dots between Bigfoot mm -hmm. and UFOs and these orbs that people have experienced uh, myself and a lot of different people. And it's happening current day, but I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and all the socials as well. Fantastic. Uh, Dr. Mayer. So uh, I also uh, have written a couple books, uh, Pink Boots and a Machete, nice. uh, my journey from NFL cheerleader to National Geographic Explorer. And it retells the, the many, many adventures and misadventures that I've had in the last almost 20 years as an explorer, uh, including uh, many near-death experiences, uh, surviving a plane crash, cholera, wow. all the good stuff, but lots of wildlife stuff, lots of discovery, um, and uh, also a survival menu for, uh, for National Geographic. Um, but uh, you can reach me through my website, mariamayer.com, and I'm also on social media at mariamayer on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Awesome. And Bryce? Yeah, you could find, I have not written a book. I think I'm the only one here that has not written a book. <laughs> you need to write books. <laughs> read them though. I, yeah, I've read them. Uh, yeah. yeah, a lot of them. Uh, but yeah, you could find me on all the socials. And, and if you're interested in, in Bigfoot and stuff, and, 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 and you know, I, I, I host a weekly podcast called uh, The Bigfoot Collectors Club, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. Jeremiah, where we talk to amazing guests 
about yep. their personal paranormal history and and do a story of high strangeness and uh and you can find that wherever you get your podcast but i'm mostly interested in you uh coming on the journey of uh, of expedition bigfoot season two with us so find me awesome. there awesome awesome love it <laughs> and russell um so same as the rest of them a social media um russellacord.com i have my own website because i have written a couple books um and then on facebook twitter instagram russell acord the other one that i have that is uh, probably the easiest way to contact me is corridor13.com. And that's where I, I actually present talent to different agencies that want speakers or actors or that sort of thing. And if you go on corridor13.com, you'll actually find Bob Gimlin there as well. I've, I've I, been, I saw that uh, last night. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> Easy to find. Very cool. Yeah. Well, uh, what, what a fun interview. Uh, this will be, uh, uh, if you're listening to this, listeners, of course, it is uh, January 3rd. It is Sunday morning, hopefully. Uh, but uh, before we go, guys, is there anything, what mindset do you want the uh, the watchers to be in before that time when um, uh, the new season is released uh, this Sunday night? What mindset should should they be in? Brace yourself for a great excited, journey. Excited, <laughs> open-minded, yeah. mostly excited. Yeah, awesome. prepare for the unexpected. And the cool thing is this year, there's uh, a lot of ways in which people can watch the show. I mean, we start off Sunday night, 8 p.m. with the pre-show, you know, new evidence. Then we roll right into season two with the first episode at 9 p.m. Uh, the very next day on January 4th, people can actually um, watch it on uh, Discovery+. Plus. It'll be streaming Fantastic. on Discovery+. Plus. And not only will they get to see that, but they'll also going to get to see the entire first season so they can quickly catch up if they've missed oh, it. Oh, cool. So they'll okay. all be on. Wow. Very cool. Very cool. That is awesome to hear that. Well, guys, uh, if that all thank you so much for coming on for spending uh, some time uh, on the podcast today and we are excited to start uh, season two and see what happens in expedition Bigfoot thank you so much all for coming on today thank you thanks thank you for having us checking out our interview at Bigfoot Society with the cast of expedition Bigfoot season two uh, thanks again to the cast for coming on and also for the travel channel uh, for uh, helping this all happen. We appreciate it a lot. Uh, again, check out the one-hour special tonight, Sunday, January 3rd at 8 p.m. Eastern, followed up by episode one of season two at 9 p.m. Eastern. And then the next day is the launch of Discovery Plus, uh, Discovery's new streaming subscription service where you can, man, watch all your favorite shows, including a whole lot of Expedition Bigfoot season uh one as well as the new stuff so don't miss out check it out uh again thanks for checking us out at bigfoot society uh like follow uh subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on anything else that is coming down the bend and also uh we have an audio podcast that's on your uh, favorite podcast uh hosts there itunes spotify all that good stuff and if you'd rather uh, read some articles, you can always go over to BigfootSocietyPodcast.com and check us out. Uh, also, we do want to say that the uh, Expedition Bigfoot crew did stay on for an extra 15 uh, minutes, about 10 to 15 minutes, to share some more stories. They talked specifically about what their favorite cryptids were outside of Bigfoot and uh, some, some other pretty cool stuff, too. So if you want to hear that extra information, you can just go over to patreon.com forward slash Bigfoot Society. For $5 a month, you get to uh, support the podcast, our growth, but also uh, so much more amazing content over there, especially some more content from the cast of uh, Expedition Bigfoot. So thanks again. We'll see you around, guys.